Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Strollin' Real. Real. As you can see, we are still quarantined in our own yes, homes, but that's okay, that's all right. Um, my roommate's gonna get her news today, so we'll see what happens. Excuse me, but uh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, we're yeah, not gonna dwell yeah. on that for too long. Yeah. Um, today, Eric, do you want to introduce the guest for today? Or just um, talk yeah. a little bit about her? We yeah, provide? we have Emily Rodriguez. She's a 2D animator. She's from, um, we went to uh, grad, grad school. Wow. So it's cool together at SCAD. She was an undergrad. Um, and I met her through uh, musical theater, which is, yeah, that's uh, uh, a weird part of my life that I do not want to address. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, she's a great animator. Um, and we're excited to have a conversation with her. So, yeah. Awesome sauce. Well, before awesome sauce. we jump into, shut up, <laughs> shut up, leave me alone. Why are we doing this? Oh, no. <laughs> you said you awesome sauce. It's all him, it's all him, not me. <laughs> Who says awesome sauce, Mahalia? <laughs> Oh no. Um, people do. Don't people do. Don't judge me. Okay. Don't judge me. Awesome sauce. Sorry guys, I'm having technical issues today, so <laughs> God help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about topic of the day. Since we have we're interviewing an animator today, what are your favorite animated TV shows or movies? Discuss. Uh, also, do you see okay. my nails? Aren't they pretty? I did them myself. Okay, I'm sorry. Awesome I'm sauce. <laughs> um... You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, my favorite animated show, it has to be um, Avatar. <laughs> we oh, have discussed Airbender? this already. Airbender is such an amazing show. I mean, Ang, mm. um, Suko, Katara. They're, those characters are just perfect. Um, I mean, Tom and Jerry. I love oh, that show classic, a lot. Classic. I love yes. the classics. Um, the uh, what's that show? I, I wow, I'm blanking on the name. The Futuristic Family. Uh, the, uh, Jetsons? the Jetson, the Jetsons, right? Um, the Jetsons. Oh, that's a really old anim anime. Yeah, I. The, you know, Boomerang. That show. That yeah. like. I, all of Boomerang, yes. All of Boomerang. Like, you know, that's, there was a, a show. Doo. Yeah, one of my favorite shows. I always blank the name on it, but I'm not going to sing the song because, you know, you're not, we don't want to get um, sued. But um, <laughs> it, the, uh, uh, it was the, um, what's it called? The ad was them, like, singing around. Uh, uh, wow, I'm blanking on English terms. Just sing the song. Sing, sing, sing part of it. Who's gonna save the world? Who's gonna save the day? It's like it had like a big shark, like a big blue shark. And it was like, oh, you're talking about like I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I love that show. I was obsessed with that show. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my god, what is the name? And I always blank on the name of it. Oh my god. I prefer that over um. What's it called? Over Scooby Doo. I was never like. Into what? Scooby -Doo. You didn't like Scooby Doo? What? No, How not really. You monster. I don't know. <laughs> I preferred watching that show. Was it? And... Uh, it wasn't Jabberjaw, was it? Yes. Yes, I think it was. Jabberjaw? Jabberjaw. I'm pretty sure it was. Jabberjaw cartoon. Yeah, that one. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I love that show so much. So, I can't believe anyway. you. Scooby Doo was uh, amazing. Um, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, Studio Ghibli. I mean, Prince of that... Egypt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Prince yeah, of Egypt. Uh, I mean, thank you first of all for making them people of color. God bless you. God bless yeah. you. Yeah. Proud um, family. But yeah, it was amazing. Uh, Proud family was great. Um, I love Proud to family. date, I love Family Guy. I love Family Guy, and I love American Dad, and I love Family Guy because they do musicals like they sing frank sinatra really? songs yeah I they have a that. whole musical they have they do so many parodies of musicals and of musical songs wow. like um 
uh, oh God, I'm blanking on them now, but they do so many of them. It's so good. And uh, I will, I know. Like, oh, oh, okay. So there's one episode, right? Where Peter yeah. plays for the, the Patriots, right? And they do this little dance. She'll poopy, she'll poopy, she'll poopy, the girl who's hard to get. That like, he, he, but that's actually from the musical, The Music Man. And they do a whole, oh. musical number. It's a whole parody of that, but it's from the musical, The Music Man. And they do like different Gene Kelly songs from like Singing in the Rain um, and different like old time, I say old mm. time, but old time musicals, like classic mm. musicals. And I, I loved it. I loved the so adaptation. So are you, are you into like adult animated shows? Yeah. F is for Family on Netflix. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's so good. I love I, it. It's with comedian Bill Burr. It's hilarious. I've never been a fan of adult animated shows. I just really? don't like them. Never The Simpsons or I, or, or I, I can Archer, almost every family guy. Of family guy. I don't know. I don't like that. Cle- Cleveland is what? It. Is that one? Cleveland The Browns? Cleveland show? Oh, yeah. I don't like that, that one. That was trash. That was trash. No! Uh, Futurama. I mean, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Mm. I, I didn't like Futurama that much. I don't like adult animated shows. I, I love I American know. Dad. American Dad is hilarious because I think Roger is so funny. Roger the alien. He oh, is yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that the one? And every time they oh. hear, every time Steve sings, I love that they make him sound like an R&B singer. It's so funny to me. <laughs> it's, it's Steve the little kid, the, like, yes. the baby with the deep voice? There's, Okay. No. Wait, that's I think that's no, bad no, no, no. guy, right? I'm confused. There th- okay, there's a baby with a dog. That's family, that's family guy. guy. Oh, okay. American dad is the alien with the teenage boy. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. But American Dad is hilarious to me. I, I love those shows. Mm, I, I don't and know. then also but, Family yeah. Guy did Star Wars, and that was actually my first <clears throat> introduction to Star Wars. I never watched it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I mean, you I'm haven't not. watched Lord of the Rings, you haven't um, watched Star Wars. But Come they on. they do the Star Wars effing... No, 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 I've watched Star Wars now. Oh, I'm, okay, okay, okay. I'm dating okay. Rachel Pridget. There's no way that I could not have watched every episode of Star Wars. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. But when I... This is pre-Brandon. pre-Brandon. I had not watched Star Wars, but mm. Family Guy did the parody episodes of, like, some of the movies. Like, I think okay. it's, like, the first three uh, movies, which is, like, whatever. Yeah. Six, seven, yeah. seven eight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Six, seven, yeah. eight. Um, no, wait. So, um, no, no, no. It's, it's, no, 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 no. it's four, five, six. Because it didn't five, start, yeah, it didn't five, start at one, two, three. Yeah. No, no, no. Four, no, no, exactly. four, five, four, five, five six. Yeah, yeah, four, five, six. Sorry. I That's mean, the new trilogy need... I'm talking about. Yeah. But, sorry. Yes. It start, they did the parody episodes of four, five, six. Mm. Oh, okay. and that was my first introduction to Star Wars, and I, I yeah. don't know, I loved it. Yeah, mm. and Brian, what's your favorite animated show? A Star Wars watch? fan is listening to this, going, "God damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, my favorite animated movie would be Zootopia. Have you guys watched it? <gasps> so good. Oh so my good. gosh. I was having anything Pixar, so to be honest. I know. Any 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 Pixar movies? Mm. I mean Coco. Sing, have you seen that one? I have not. I have not. Sing, I love Is that with it. Tori Kelly? Yes. Oh, I yeah. I love that she artist. She killed that Tor- song. Yeah. Tori Kelly is one of my also- favorite artists, so. Oh, Tori Kelly. I want to yeah. meet her. I was like, hey, your yeah. song is so beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, right. T- Taryn Egerton, the guy who played the gorilla, he sings the Elton John song at oh, the end. Oh, yes. And he plays yeah. Elton John a year or two later for Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Wait, is that him? That's him. That's crazy. Right. That's crazy. Right. Wow. Well, Zootopia and what other, Ryan? Uh, I, th- I feel like this is like really underrated, but Wreck- uh, Ral- Ralph... Wreck-It Ralph is great. Yeah, Wreck-It Ralph, yeah. The first I one, I really loved it. The second one, it wasn't... I, I, I feel like it wasn't it. as good as the first one, but it still was mm-hmm. good, so... Yeah. Um, for TV shows, uh, does anime count as animation? Oh, dude, 
Of course. Right? Okay. Right? Yeah. okay. Right? Attack on Titan, baby. <laughs> oh my god. Eric, Ryan made me watch that with him. <laughs> the first and episode. I would get so pissed every episode. <laughs> and he, he'd always ask me, do you want to stop? No, I want to watch what watch more. <laughs> Press play. Why am, I, why am I not invited to this? Oh, this was it when... Was like why, first, what were we doing? We were, we were editing. It was like, yeah, it was like first or second. Lack of friends. No, it, no, it, was, it was before. Wait, we met, Attack right? no, 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 on the Titan. No, 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 no. Attack we, on the Titans. It's like the big, the monsters. big giant yeah, monsters, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's super ugly. Really. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That are cannibals and stuff. But Ryan and I were doing something, and it was, it was an all nighter, and we yeah, were like, yeah. we just got dinner, and was like, oh, we just need something to like watch before watch while we eat. Yeah. We start yeah, um, yeah. exactly. I've, I've never so you were already watched. home with your mother's home cooked food. So wow, I'm Eric. Where's our food back in yeah. the day, huh? <laughs> I, I did not like you guys then. Um, uh, oh, I, what a jerk. Oh, okay. What a jerk. I see um, how it is. Um, you know, uh, you guys are older than me. I'm just, you know, I was, what, uh, you know, in the hell that mean? You know what? He's you guys are my elders. We need to go back and <laughs> just the two of us doing mm. struggles real. Yeah, you know what? Oh, you guys are my elders. Goodbye, Eric. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Your what? Your what? Elders. Anyway, okay, um, cool. I'm going to go seen... ahead and mute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen like anime like that. Um, I, I don't even like, I never like w- sat down and watched a lot of uh, Pokemon. Ooh, you know what was a good anime? Wallf- uh, have you ever heard of the anime Wallflower? Wallflower. Wallflower? I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. No. No. Uh, no, not really. No. What's it about? It's oh studio. It's studio it was Ghibli. about this girl. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. It was. It, okay, I, I got the name right. It was about this girl who. Yeah. She was like, I don't even know how to describe it. I just remember her <laughs> nose kept bleeding a lot and she lived with these really, really hot dyes. Like every time she would get nervous, her nose would bleed. But then in the <laughs> moments where she was really confident, she was like the hottest girl in the room. And you just wanted her and like the other main character to, the character to get together so bad. It was so, it was such a good show. It was a good show. I think uh, I got canceled though. That's my it. biggest problem about anime. You give me one season and then cancel it. Oh, I hate it when that happens. It's like no ending. Does no it happen content. a lot? Yeah. Huh? Does it happen uh, a lot in anime? Like they cancel a lot of shows? It does. Yeah. I mean, usually uh, they have like a lot of filler seasons, which mm. I don't like. Um, but other than that, yeah, I enjoy watching. So, anime. It, what's your favorite anime, Ryan? Attack on the, uh, on the Titans? Yeah. T- I, I would say Attack on Titan. Um, yeah, Attack on Titan. Oh, I remember an anime show that it, for me was hilarious, but I did not accept any. I did, I used to watch it with my with my cousin, but um, I, if it's called Totally Spies. Oh, oh I love it, that it was show. A, it was on Cartoon Network, that was right? So good. Yeah, it was totally so funny. Totally Spies was the shit. Okay, <laughs> it was really Yo, funny, Brace right? Face was good. I love Brace Face. Sabrina. I don't remember their names. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember their names. But yeah. I just remember the color. It was red, yellow, red, and... green, and yellow, Ooh. right? Oh, yeah, green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green? Red, red, green. green that was a fun color. show. I'm um, Total Drama Island. Oh, show, it was oh, like Survivor, but like I hated yeah, that. <laughs> Kids Next Door. It was I so hated funny. It. But Powerpuff Girls was nice. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know Samurai Jack. Samurai. Samurai. Except they kept they kept beating the shit out of Mojo Jojo. <laughs> and it made me monkey. feel so bad. All his fingers would be broken. All ten of them. Oh my God. Like, damn Mojo. You don't want to give up this life of crime? Damn. Give me your ass to look at every other episode. Yeah, that's oh. right. Um I've never I, I never liked the show of the of the dog, Carly Dog, is that? Uh, the the guy that it was the dog that had like lived in like um Oh, bro- ca- like, uh, 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 yeah, courage the cowardly dog, right? 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. It was Dude, so was... creepy yeah, and so weird. Yeah. weird. I loved mm-hmm. it, though. It was weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved mm-hmm. everything about it. You I did not like that show. That stubborn motherfucker. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like them. I, I, I did not I like the show. It was just because it. it was creepy. I don't know why. Yeah. I did not like it. It was just creepy. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, thank you. And spam, spam. Oh, wow. My, my, Bob and Ponga. I said it in Spanish. So, which one? Bob Esponja. Bob Esponja. SpongeBob. Oh. Uh, SpongeBob. Sorry. That sounds great. No, no, no. no. The, first, the first few seasons of SpongeBob. Yeah, it's amazing. super. Yeah, then it got the then it got super. The ones weird. are obnoxious. Oh. obnoxious. Like the old, no. old ones. The Those old, old ones. The campfire episode. <laughs> <laughs> the the crusty crab pizza yeah. episode. It's the pizza for Classic. you and me. They're great. Come Classic. on, Ryan. The first episode. Oh, yeah. Come on. How Come do you on. not like old SpongeBob? That that was hilarious. Maybe maybe it's because I watched the new one, not the old one. No 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 no. no. The new ones are no. trash. That's oh, not. Okay. Go, yeah. <laughs> go, go, go to the first go seasons. Back. Okay okay okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try seasons. Maybe. I mean Dexter. No, the I'll, campfire I'll also episode Dexter. is my favorite one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dexter's Laboratory was really good. Oh. You know which one I hated though? I hate Johnny Bravo. Me too. I'm right <laughs> He's there with misogynistic. You. Like this He's was not asshole. okay. He was <laughs> like this. This I was go. not a good asshole. show oh, for us man. to watch. Also, Pepe Le Pew. Hello, what happened to consent? <laughs> he, was like, he was out That's here so meet you and cat. It was, it was oh very, my gosh that's so true oh. that's so true happy was actually really problematic <laughs> like it was Does it cancel that show i don't know i don't know that's right but that show was yeah i that had weird crazy. feelings about ed ed and eddie me too oh, I'm i just hate to talk show. about that it I was, was like, like I, I think the animation it. style bothered me. Yeah. I but sometimes it. I like some of the episodes and other times I'm like, this is really weird and creepy. I don't know. Yeah, I I was like very yeah. so so about Ed, Ed and Eddie. Yeah. I yeah. Didn't like it. I'm right there with you. I, mm-hmm. I you know what? Also, uh, another show I didn't like much, it was at the Rugrats. <gasps> oh. Shut your mouth. Rugrats was like, on par. Oh my gosh. Rugrats I, was on. Susie Carmichael, why. one of the <laughs> best characters. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know what character is that, but I trust That's you. That's a little, little black girl whose mom uh-huh. is a doctor and her dad is like an animator in like TV, in the TV industry or something like that. Uh, oh, wow. I, I mean, I didn't. I, I just... loved Rugrats. Never like regrets. Um, well, yeah, I guess that's this is a good yeah, list of shows, it. right? I'm trying to we, think of other ones, but I, I, I we, mean, Looney Tunes. We need not. We need to get. Oh, Looney Tunes was really good. Classic. Classic for sure. Love Looney Tunes. Like Ryan says, like Chef Kiss. Mwah. Yeah. Bon appetit. Mwah. <laughs> no. Anyways, we should we should move on to our uh, guest. <laughs> right? we, should, we should we should we should we should so yeah let's meet our our guest for today her name is emily rodriguez she is a 2d animator and she's 20 years old and she's a designer based in atlanta georgia so she's local to here um to here wow to atlanta <laughs> emily is a create is creative she's passionate and she loves to travel and she also plays ukulele in her free time so that's fun she was also a dancer i know that she loves dancing a lot um, but she has a BFA in animation. She did it at SCAT, so she's uh, from our school. Are you not gonna say something from SCAT, Ryan? You were saying something for UGA. Yeah. SCAT, baby. I mean, I wish I w- was wearing like SCAT. Okay, for the people who are okay. listening, Ryan just like got up and tried to like rip his shirt open like man, <laughs> and it did not it did work nothing. Anyway. At all. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Nice. She's got a degree in animation <laughs> under her belt. Uh, she's looking forward to starting her career in the animation industry, and she has done a lot of good stuff um, in the past few years, and I know that she's going to do better stuff, so let's call her. Well, Emily, we're so excited to have you here with us. Um, Emily is an amazing animator. We're going to talk more about her, her career and about life. Mm-hmm. But before we get into that, can you share a little bit... Um, more about yourself and 
Who are you? Who's Emily? That's a big question, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just encompass that real quick. Um, so obviously my name is Emily Rodriguez. I am currently a 2D animator and designer based here in Atlanta. Just graduated college. I went to school with these folks at SCAD, so no strangers here. <laughs> um, I was originally born in South Florida. So I'm a Miami girl at heart. Um, nice, 305. Up, yeah, 305. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was raised by a single mother. I was raised in a Cuban-American household, so very Hispanic, loving family. Um, I remember my grandma used to like give me like the, the sugar at the bottom of the cafecito cup when I was a kid. Oh, so it's yes. like, oh my goodness, you know, it's that, you know, that good stuff. Yes. <laughs> so very Hispanic, grew up in a very loving household. Um, I remember always just being very creative growing up, uh, completely right brained, very passionate about the arts. Um, I started drawing at a young age. I played the piano for seven years. Don't remember mm. most of it. I wish I did because I love it so much. <laughs> Um, I was a competitive dancer in high school, so my body's broken in more ways than I can count. <laughs> oh my <laughs> like, don't keep that up as much as I would like to, but um, that was a huge passion of mine. And then in college, I uh, really blossomed and I kind of uh, started pursuing like performing arts more. So I took like an acting class. I started singing. I learned the ukulele, did a little bit of theater with Eric here. <laughs> so, um, oh, you were in the theater group? I was. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I was the oh. choreographer for oh. that one year that we started. Yeah, the one year, club. yeah. <laughs> Eric tried so hard to get me to join the theater group. Yeah. And really? I was like, yeah, I was like, come on, don't let me do this alone. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I'm the only film person in here. Come, come with me. Yeah, and I, I didn't know much about theater also, so I was mm -hmm. just there because, you know, I was getting to know what artistic groups were in SCAD. So right. it was, it was, it was entertaining. It was wild. <laughs> it was wild. It almost made me wish I had done theater in high school, but I'm like, I have a different calling. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, it it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. And also, um, it made me confirm that I did not like musicals that much, but that's another conversation. That's another conversation <laughs> for another day. Yet he did a yeah, musical for his thesis. Yeah, that's the thing. That's like, I'm, I'm Where is the connection there, Eric? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Let's say music. Let's say music. I like let's music. say music in general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, I got really into Broadway, like, in 2016 when Hamilton came out. That was, like, my mm. entry, my gateway drug into Broadway musicals. I so I was like, oh, it's my time to be a Broadway star star in college um, never did it again it was <laughs> it was a great experience I'm it's like, it's yeah, grueling it. it's a grueling work it is very tough it's I very to, underappreciated um, oh yeah I used to go to um an art high school mm -hmm. and I was too shy to do like to be on stage because the people in my school were very competitive it, it was like glee but like more cutthroat <laughs> glee oh my gosh and so, <laughs> but like the hours of rehearsal that goes into I mean it's non-stop and it really takes mm -hmm. a toll on your mental your body your spirit like it, it's a lot you have to love it to want to do it as a full-time thing yeah so it's got to be the stress you love. That's Eric and I's motto. <laughs> exactly yeah. it. That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I dabbled in a couple different art forms growing up. Um, but I think somewhere in my heart, I always knew animation is what I wanted to pursue as a career. Um, it kind of started like in middle school. Uh, I was homeschooled for a majority of my life, actually. So from third grade until I graduated high school, I was at home um, studying. And uh, it gave me like a lot of flexibility in my schedule to be able to pursue all these different artistic passions of mine. How so, did you like being homeschooled? You know, I right. liked it because of the flexibility, because it wasn't yeah. like the structure of like the public school system in South Florida. Mm -hmm. I was able to, I was able to dance. Honestly, dance was like my biggest passion growing up. Um, I knew it wasn't something I could do because I kept getting injured and I kept getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, my body can't take much longer than this. Um, <laughs> I have amazing friends who are like dancers in New York and who are studying, you know, for their BFAs in dance. And it's awesome. Wow. It wasn't for me though. I knew like so I'm telling you, I loved it so much, but animation was in my heart to pursue. So that's what I ended up doing. That's why I came to Georgia to um, kind of study. I've been here for the past four years now. Don't plan on leaving because now my career is starting here. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a little bit about me, I guess. So because you are you came from a Cuban household, but you've been doing art for so long, were your parents like surprised when you decided to pursue art as a career? Were they like totally okay with it? That's my favorite question to ask children of immigrants. And I love that because I, I think I've been really blessed in that way where my mom was completely supportive of, supportive of me. 
in that sense. I know a lot of people don't always get that. So I was very lucky in that sense. Um, she, <laughs> she's a businesswoman. She's very <laughs> smart. She has her BFA and her, or her BB, her, what is it? Her business, uh, bachelor MBA? of business, I guess. MBA. She also has her MBA. BBA? Yeah. She has both. <laughs> she has the, yeah. the bachelor's BBA and bachelor's. And MBA. I think, yeah, that's Brian, it. that's correct. Right. Cause you have a BBA. Yeah, I have a BBA in finance, uh, so mm-hmm. MBA, yeah. Okay. That's a okay. business for mm-hmm. masters. Like point yeah, is, she's a, very yeah. smart. She's very like business geez. oriented. Yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what what came as a surprise is the fact that I had the talent to draw. I remember I was like in middle school at this point, and I was doing a project on France, and I was like, I'm gonna take this clip art of the Eiffel Tower, I'm gonna redraw it. And I did it for my project. And my mom looks at it. She's like, Emily, what, when did you learn how to draw? Like, this is really good. Mind you, I look at it now. I'm like, that was not that great. But, <laughs> but it was like the start of me kind of seeing like, oh, maybe this is something that can go somewhere. So my mom was supportive from the get-go. Um, once I had a, like decided that I wanted to pursue an artistic career, she's like, that's great. If you're going to do that, you're going to get your education because that's important, you know, that you have that. No one can take your education from you. And if you do this, you better bust your butt and you, you better like put your all into it. So she was like, as long as you work hard and put your all yeah. into it, then, then I support you. Like she's always been like that for me. She's my, I would not be where I am without her today. So I'm very yeah. lucky in that sense to have that support. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and going back a little bit to, to your formation as a, as an animator, what exactly mm-hmm. made you fall in love with animation? I know that you said that you were drawing a little bit mm-hmm. um, since, you know, your childhood and all that stuff, but what was the moment a, that when you look back, you say, okay, that's when I fell mm-hmm. in love with animation. So I always get this question and it's like hard for me to pinpoint exactly mm-hmm. when it was because yeah. it's I've always had like a love for animated films and shows like that's just been part of my life growing up yeah. like, sitting in front of the tv watching Avatar The Last Airbender, Danny Phantom like all the classics from you know Nickelodeon and Disney and all that stuff mm-hmm. so there wasn't just one like I, I find myself it's very hard for me to pick a favorite because I'm not biased in yeah. any way I'm very yeah. like this is you know that style and this medium and I just love it all but if I could pinpoint something I think there was just a moment when I realized you could do it as a career and make money mm-hmm. yes, <laughs> and, and like yeah. pursue it as something, you know, for your, for, as a job, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I was like, Oh, but I didn't know there was a thing. That's kind of really cool. And I like to draw. What if I could do that for a living? Mm-hmm. So that's, mm-hmm. I, I was pretty young. I think honestly, um, when I, uh, saw that SCAD was an option for a school, that yeah. they had a, you know, a major in animation. I was like, mm-hmm. that's a really good option for me. Yes. I should, and that's when I kind of decided, I think I want to go into animation. I want to study it. So, mm-hmm. uh, and learn more about it. Cause um, in high, not in high school. Well, yeah, in high school, basically like my, my education before college, yeah. I um, didn't really have a lot of resources in South Florida. There was mm-hmm. like the you know, like local art studios and art places for like kids that I would go to. I was like the 14 year old amongst nine year olds taking classes because there wasn't a lot of resources for me um, wow. growing up, which I was just like really tall in the room, like drawing <laughs> random things. And I'm like, this is awkward. <laughs> but right? that was like the only um, resource I had uh, mm. to really start working on my skills. So everything I learned in animation was from these four years in college. That's why I was like, I need to like bust my butt and learn as much as I can. This is my first time experiencing anything animation. So um, I guess that kind of answers it. it was like, it was me realizing that I could do this as a career. And I was like, I'm going to do it. Why not? Yes. Yeah. And before we continue, Mahali had a technical issue, but she's yes, back. I'm she's so back sorry. with us. <laughs> no worry about it. But um, I guess uh, going back, you were talking about uh, Avatar Last Airbender. We were talking about that a uh, few episodes back and oh. Brian and I, we were big fans of, mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. The Avatar. animation, not not the movie, but animation. You got to no, clarify, it's, mean, the sh- it's the show. Yeah. It's the show. <laughs> this show, that movie is just trash. Anyway. <laughs> no, uh, it is. Sorry. The movie doesn't exist. What are you talking about? It's not a right. thing. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what, what movie? Yeah, there yeah. is no war in Bossing Say. <laughs> oh, my God. I can. T- I mean, um, the uncle, the way that they did the uncle in that movie was so bad. I will say, well, Iroh, this character is just- right? Is that Iroh, yeah. Iroh, yeah. The way oh they did- I- Iroh and Soup. I mean, I guess he's the best actor of the bunch. The one um, I forgot his. The name, one who played Zuko. Yeah, Zuko. Oh yeah. Um, he he was the best one, but 
Okay, let's continue. <laughs> but, um, it's just, it's not yeah, it's, a train it's wreck. <laughs> too painful. Yeah. Um, you were talking about uh, all those uh, shows that you watched growing up. Can you identify what's your favorite style of animation from maybe your favorite show that you fell in love? You know, that sometimes we, oh, I fall in love with this, um, I fell in love with this movie. So that's why I love comedy. Do you have a show for you that maybe guide your style of animation towards okay. that? Man, see, that's another one. That's another tough yeah, one for me. <laughs> a difficult one, yeah. So um, in regards to like styles, so I'm a 2D animator. That, that mm -hmm. differs in like what most feature films have, like yeah. 3D or CGI. Yeah. Um, I have such an appreciation for it because it's so technical and when it's done right, it can be so beautiful yeah. and can imitate life really well. Um, yeah. But I just find such a charm to the classic 2D animation that was, you know, that's the origins it's the foundations of animation right, so right. to um to continue that i'm hoping to like you know uh get more into it so that maybe it comes back in a bigger way because i feel like yeah. TV animation is only really we only really see it in uh the tv the tv industry basically it's yeah. not right. much so much in like the theaters these days um but i feel like that's changing with some movies that have come out recently and i'll, I'll name like two off the top of my head that um i think are kind of like changing the industry um in, in regards to style for animation. Um, one of them is Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Oh. Oh my great. God. I literally Take a just moment. Great watched movie. it like two days ago. Oh. It was oh really, gosh. really, Such really a good. Such a good movie. Oh. I not only, not only the narrative of that, but like mm -hmm. the actual style, it's, it's yeah, all 3D. Style. But it's like taking influence from the origins of the comic books from mm -hmm. Spider-Man and like implementing it and, and integrating it with the 3D to make it something new yeah. that we have never really seen before. And I was like, that's just yeah. pushing the medium even further. So I, right. I really, I love that. I adore the narrative in that as well and the characters. Um, and then also uh, Sergio Pablos's Klaus, that's on Netflix. I don't know, have you guys seen that? Beautiful, okay. beautiful. <laughs> no. Beautiful movie. <gasps> yeah, the oh, Christmas nice. movie. It's, um, oh, no. maybe I haven't seen it. You it's should. Wonderful. Oh, oh, it's I know which one you're talking about. Fox. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Okay. And that yeah. one's really pretty too. And that's like pushing the um, the classic 2D animation because that's all, like was done on pencil and paper along with digital and then shaded in a way to give it volume and depth so that it's not yeah. just like flat, which that's is awesome. like you know, what you would see in classic. So it's again pushing, you know, for uh, new and fresh ways to, to see the animation and to create it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just like the, the behind the scenes process of how they make these films is what really fascinates me. Um, I think what even informs like my style too. Um, it's just kind of going above and beyond, like, what have we not seen yet? What are we trying to do to, you know, push further the, this field of animation? So Klaus and Spider-Verse, I think, are two really strong pioneers where they're yeah. doing something that we've never seen before. And I, I, I want to hopefully be a part of, you know, bringing those kinds of elements and bringing 2D back to feature films. Who knows mm -hmm. what's going to happen? But these films are definitely starting that process, I think. Do you yeah. think that with the times of COVID now that there's going to be more animation that comes mm. out in like the next, let's say, few years, a uh, few months to a year? I think yes, because honestly, it's a it's a medium that you can you can have the ability to do at home. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just started a job. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats, Thank you so congrats much. right? Yeah, so it's very exciting and it's very doable. If you have the setup, if you have, you know, the resources and the programs, which, I mean, a studio should be giving you if mm -hmm. you are working for them, <laughs> um, there is definitely potential. And I think that, you know, jobs have not, they, they've paused, you know, because of COVID, but, right. you know, hiring, I've seen it, hiring is ramping back up again for um, animation studios. So they're not at all stopping, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. And if you're a person who wants to get into animation, what are the like basic essentials that oh. you should get? Oh man. Um, I know to, it's a lot. It's question. a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. I'm trying to think back like, what did I do? <laughs> um, I think having a strong understanding of the human body, because that's mostly what you're yeah. animating. You're animating human characters, even like creatures yeah. too. So like anatomy of, of horses, dogs, like different kinds of, um, animals, um, having a good understanding of how they move. So doing like action studies, watching like someone do a walk cycle or, or acting. There's a lot of different things you can do to get the basics of it, but having a good understanding of, of how the body moves and reacts to things, um, I think is a good starting point. 
And then it's just yeah. refining those skills. It's um, understanding the 12 principles of animation. It's um, literally just studying from life and translating that into a digital format, a drawn format. Okay, and do you guys how I can like, That's like the quickest yeah. thing, because it's so right. much, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's crazy. But do you guys as animators take classes of, of understanding the human anatomy? Because I know for, mm. for, for some tattoo artists, they make them take classes to draw correctly mm -hmm. the, the faces and the... Do you guys have anything like that? In, I mean, in... it's like, you could do like life drawing. You could even do, you don't even have to take a mm. class for it. There's, there's online resources of like... Well, true, um, yeah. They'll do like, uh, you know, I mean, it's naked people. It's life drawing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd have to sketch it. And, and like, it's a, again, it's like a studying like the muscles, the, the mm -hmm. skeletal structure. Because um, then once you understand it, on on like how it looks correct like ana anatomically yeah. right mm -hmm. um then you can go ahead and abstract it and you can warp it to you know like the style that you see in animation it's not true to life but it, it resembles it so you mm -hmm. need to have the basics first before you can go ahead and break those rules of anatomy yeah yeah that's, that's why i would say start with the basics first mm -hmm. so that then you can break it <laughs> that's super fascinating i mean it makes sense that you would have to study the anatomy yeah. of a person or yeah. an animal so you can correctly draw them but yeah. it, like for me as a filmmaker it's not something that i would think about uh, to me it's all right let's just get this horse in here whatever <laughs> <laughs> make a move let him do his Go. thing right <laughs> but that's 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 really interesting yeah, yeah it's a lot it it's a lot <laughs> it's really a lot i imagine i imagine <laughs> having to study all of those elements it's it's crazy but also, you were an intern in an amazing studio called Bento Box. They're mm -hmm. the people behind Bob's Burger, Duncan Bill, Paradise PD. I know they have a show called uh, Central Park in yes. Hulu, right? Mm -hmm. And they have another yeah. show coming out. Um, I think it's Hoops on, um, on Netflix, right? Yep. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with them? Because I mean, Box Burger, it's an amazing <laughs> it is, show. Yeah. And Duncan Bill, I love Amy Poehler. I, and, and I want to sit down <laughs> and, and, and watch it. So um, yeah. yeah, just tell us about that. Absolutely, man. That was such a fun time. Uh, it was in the summer, it was last summer, summer of 2019, that I was an animation intern at their Atlanta branch. It's right around the corner yeah. here, actually, from SCAD. And um, I'm not gonna lie, it was very intimidating at first. <laughs> it was my very first time in the studio setting. It's just, it's a big old office. You know, we all have our computers. We all sitting in our little spaces. It's not cubicles, it's very open space. Um, but again, it was like my first time working on a real production. So I was like, oh my God, am I gonna make a mistake? Am I going to get something wrong? Am I gonna, am I gonna ask a stupid question? You know, like yeah. the normal nerves you would get on your first day. Yeah. Um, but honestly, like, the people there were so nice. They were very willing to like get me accustomed to the production pipeline. Um, I was working on season two of Paradise PD, which is now on Netflix. So Ooh, nice. If you wanna go through those episodes Ooh. and find my name. You can. <laughs> 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 I'm about, I'm on like four different episodes, I think. So that's um, awesome. It was really fun. That will forever be my first show that I worked on. I can't change it. Wow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. So uh, definitely take a watch if you want. <laughs> so. Um, it was a great, it was a really good experience. I kind of learned very quickly how to um, hit my deadlines every week. Um, mm -hmm. We typically you animate about a thousand frames a week, and so mm -hmm. if you don't know, uh, every frame of animation is twenty four drawings, so it's twenty four uh, frames a second. Right, right, right. So, um, like for film, twenty four frames. Yeah, twenty three point nine eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little less, but. Um, <laughs> So uh, it was typical that you were like hitting about a thousand frames a week in order to stay on production schedule. Um, oh my gosh. That's and, and it wasn't drawing. How, how long did it take for you to like, because I imagine for me, like it takes me forever to draw a face. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a storyboard. For exactly. Everybody. And that's with <laughs> a stick sure. figure body. So how long does it take for you to draw? So, okay. So here's the thing though. There's this magical thing called rigs. Do you guys, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what it is. No, no, no. <laughs> Explain to us. Okay, okay. So I um, love that I'm learning. I love this. You can kind of think of it almost like a puppet. So like puppets mm. have these different strings that control the different body parts. They control the head, maybe the eyes. Um, you can think of that in a digital format where like there's these control points that are connected to the drawings. 
So a rig mm-hmm. has um, every single part of the body, body separated out into different layers. And uh, the controls, you know, control different parts of it. So those are pre-drawn. Those are imported into our um, programs. And we can animate with that. So it cuts down on production time because you don't have to oh. do the rough animation. You don't have to clean it up. You don't have to color it yourself. It's already done. Now you're just focusing Ooh. on the element of animation in order to um, match it to, I guess, the, the action that's happening in that scene. So that's how I would wow. do it. <laughs> Magic. Wow. Isn't it cool? <laughs> Welcome to the 21st century, baby. <laughs> wow. So it wouldn't take as long, but you know, there was a, there's a process that you go through. Um, you have to, you get the storyboards first Mm -hmm. that informs you of where your key poses are. So then you would, you would position the rig according to those poses, get that approved. That may take like one or two passes of like, Oh, fix this here, fix the hand and whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you would do in between, whereas you would fill in the space between the keys Okay. Um, and once that yeah. gets approved, then that shot is done. You can work on the next one, or you can work on some like mul- simultaneously. That's what I did sometimes too. Wow! Yeah. Wow. So that was I mean, that was so my typical work week. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> my head hurts. Oh, yeah. But I guess that, Sorry. that helps. <laughs> it's a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I imagine that. I mean, it obviously mm-hmm. makes it easier for you guys if you guys are just mm-hmm. moving that hand and not having to basically draw the entire thing. Exactly. Again, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's... But I mean, you're still having to do a, a thousand. Oof, no, it's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. It and is. it depends on the shots too. Like the rigs are like basic, but if there's a, something really like action heavy where it's like the rig mm-hmm. can't be pushed that far, then you got to do hand drawn and that it just Oof. depends on the shot that you get. So mm-hmm. it's very much like dependent on that. And you are animating a lot all day, every day. Yeah. Um, but I will say like that experience really prepped me um, for, you know, success. Uh, mm-hmm. I took that internship was right before my senior year of college. So I gained so many skill sets and only it was four months that I was there and it was like a crash course in like the industry and like production schedules and hitting your deadlines that you can be productive in your work. So it really helped me to be able to, to push myself and to even be ready for, um, post-graduation. Cause it was like, cool. I have a little bit of industry experience now as an intern. I'm not so scared to now have a full-time job, you know? Yeah. So it definitely right. prepped me for success. And I'm like so thankful for all the folks over there because they were just incredibly nice to me and um, really encouraging like as a first time person in the industry. Mm, yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. So where, where are you working now? So I am currently working at Awesome Inc. I do have to preface this by saying I, my views are my own and not the expression of the company. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Should say that. <laughs> so Awesome Inc. is also located in Atlanta, um, working on a project. I can't talk about it, but it's yeah. very exciting. Right. And um, it is a women-owned business. The team is full of oh, women wow. animators, which I'm really pumped about because <laughs> I feel that's like that's amazing. not super common. So yeah, that's where I'm at currently. I literally just started this week. <laughs> oh my do gosh, you have any jackpot. Yeah, right? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Do, do they have any uh, other works or are they just... Oh, um, okay. So they um, they have a lot of like commercial work. So what I love oh, about them is okay. they do... Um, like different spots for like Adult Swim, for Cartoon mm. Network, oh, kind nice. of like, you know, those in-between commercials, like the, right, right, right. the, the little but, bits. Yeah, they do a lot of that kind of contract work. Um, but what I loved about them is that they really like push their animators to think outside the box and also like create work that's um, different from like their own styles. So they work in a lot of different styles and use a lot of different programs for that. So it's not just like, oh, you look at it and that's like, oh, that's awesome in style. Like, no, they do so many different things and that's so diverse um, that it really like drew me because I was like, that's pushing their animators to not just stick to one thing to really, mm-hmm. you know, try out different things and expand their skill sets. So that's what drew me to it initially. And I'm like, hey, now I'm here. <laughs> wow, that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. It's really cool. That's, I'll, I'll let yeah. you know how it goes. It's my third day yeah. out here. <laughs> let us know, let us know. Um, <laughs> So um, I imagine that creating a character in, in animation might not be as different as uh, maybe film because you have to sit down, uh, create a character bio. Um, but for you, what's your process of creating a character? Do you imagine the physicality of a character first or do you imagine their personalities? Do you match them? Uh, then you create maybe a body type or a, or a character that resemble those personalities. Tell us a little bit about your process of creating story. 
So it's actually, it's a little bit of everything. Like everything that you said, it's pretty much what I do. Um, yeah. My process though, I do like to figure out their background. I like to figure out who they are, what they've been through, what they're going to go through in the story. And um, that's one thing I consider. I definitely do that beforehand. Then I also consider like the style of the show or the film that I'm designing for. Um, is it more cartoony? Is it more realistic? Are the proportions off? Am I going to make them heavier? Am I going to make them bulkier? Are they square? Are they, you know, like it's different. It's also like shape language too. Like what does their shape say about them as a character so that um, their silhouette is clear and I can recognize as that character. Mm -hmm. um, and then, well, yeah, I guess it's just those two things. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to think about, you know, their, their yeah. backstory, who they are, and then kind of design around that yeah. and, and consider the, the style that I'm working in. Okay. And um, for people who might not, uh, know about animators. For example, me and Mahalia, we have a, a, an idea mm -hmm. that we want to turn it into possibly an uh, animated Ooh. feature, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, and we actually wanted 2D because we wanted something to feel like Prince yes. of, 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 Prince of, of Egypt. Egypt. So oh, we want that feel yes. for it. So what do you recommend for people who do not know, for filmmakers uh, who do not know much about animation when prepping for a story that obviously will be animated? Mm. I would say definitely have like who the character, like the character bio basically um, mm -hmm. settled, who they are, mm -hmm. what, what their ambitions are, because then that'll kind of inform the design of it. Are they, are they more grungy? Are they grumpy? Are they mm -hmm. um, stuck in their ways? Or are they bubbly and happy? Are they a kid? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's going to inform like the kinds of shapes you would use. I would say like the shape language is very important when you're designing a character not just because it's recognizable as a silhouette, but it also um, subconsciously informs the audience, like what, what kind of person this is. Mm. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head because I took a character design class, so I know this. <laughs> um, like, like more square shapes kind of block a person off as like sturdy and stable and like mm. strong. Circular shapes are like non-threatening. They're kind of bubbly and, and soft. Um, triangles are a little bit more stubborn. So it's like, it's, it's also the study of, of like how, how people perceive different shapes and even different colors. Like there's so many different things you got to consider. <laughs> wow. So, wow. so nailing crazy. down the character first is a very vital step into how the design is going to come out. So figure out yeah. who it is and then you can work around it. That's what wow. I would say. <laughs> This is so fascinating. I'm so glad you guys are <laughs> no, fascinated by this. <laughs> I, I know nothing about the process of animation. So yeah. just learning the like the tidbits and the intricacies. This is, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. It's a lot because yeah. you know, you're creating it from scratch. This right. is, I mean, you're, you're referencing real life, but you also, you're creating something new. So mm -hmm. you have to think about every little detail. You know, like, do they have a scar on their face? Where's that scar from? Did they have a, a sad backstory? You yeah. know, are they nervous yeah. about it? Like little things like that, you literally you have to consider every single thing, which wow. I'm sure you guys do too in film, I'm sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm taking notes, Mahal. No, seriously, yeah. I'm blown away. Okay. I'm just sitting here like, wow. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love this. This is great. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um, okay, so as a Latina, um, well, let me preface this by saying, so in the film industry, there is a disparaging amount of, like the, the, there's a divide between people of color and women mm -hmm. and the majority. Mm -hmm. um, is it, the, <laughs> don't laugh, Eric. You said it so funny though. She's not wrong though. Majority. I mean, you're not wrong. I, <laughs> I completely agree. The majority knows what the majority is. You know who you are. <laughs> but um, is it the same? Uh, is that it's like the same in the animation industry as well? I would say like, yes. Is there a lack of diversity? Okay. I, okay. So here's the thing. Um, it's like do mainly dominated by males, right? Mm. Not that you guys are bad things, right? But it's just... No, it's, it's okay. We know. <laughs> the majority. No, I'm the majority, saying. right? <laughs> And it's been like that. I mean, that's the origins of it. It was, you know, male animators that started the industry. Um, you know, female animators back in like Walt Disney's day were getting paid next to nothing to be colorists. And that's mm. like the, the lowest of the low in that time of what you could do uh, on a production. So we've had to work our way absolutely through the years into higher positions. And um, 
I'm seeing a small start, and this is like in, in regards to like diversity as well in animation. Um, more in the TV industry than in the film industry, I'd say. Uh, there's more diversity with different uh, ethnicities and different cultures getting the limelight in TV shows. Like uh, La Casa Grandes is a Hispanic TV show on Nickelodeon. Uh, Glitch Text has like a main characters who are Latino and Asian. And so that is fascinating start. because there, even with um, live action, there seems to be more diversity mm -hmm. in television than there is in film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that? And I don't know if that's because yeah. TV yeah. is more progressive mm -hmm. and it works faster, so they're mm -hmm. they're 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 like ahead in certain mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in, in short films too, because there have been some short films like Hair Love recently um, that you know are celebrating more cultures and they're giving more limelight to mm -hmm. just people that haven't had a space to tell those stories. Um, but again, it's not on the feature film format, which I would, I would yeah. really love to see that. Um, and right. in regards to like, um, well, I guess it's, it's both like in the actual stories and then in like leadership roles. I think if there are Latina women in leadership roles, it's not as being like publicized or it's not on social media. It's not something that's being celebrated as much. Mm. Um, mm. and I would really like to see that more because I'm someone who'd love to be in a leadership role one day and yeah. I would love to see that celebrated. I'd love to see that um, kind of be more normal and not so hard to attain, you know, because it's, it's, it's tough out here being a woman. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, I wonder if we compare her with Denise Santos. Because hmm. yes. she, she runs something called Latinas in Media, and it's a, a, an Atlanta community to help mm. uh, Latina women um, mm. who are in media and yeah. and in the and the arts and stuff. So I wonder if there's a way for her to like curate a group for Latina right. anime. That would be so cool. Of course. I know there's a Latinx yes. animation group for sure. Um, I actually was just researching it today. Oh wow! Uh, so there's there's small things here and there, but again, I still <laughs> think there's room to improve. I think that of course we have awesome perspectives that deserve to be told, and um, especially just even in like leadership roles, like we have so much potential to be able to, to guide others um, with our own perspectives on the world and how we tell stories. So I'm hoping for uh, more opportunities like that to come up, especially in animation, just because again, you can do absolutely anything in this medium. You're literally creating the illusion of life yeah. through right. drawings. So yeah. um, I see potential. I, just, I hope we get there in my lifetime. <laughs> Of course, no. We, one, we, day, we, one day, one day, we'll yeah. get there. We'll get there for sure. For sure. And I mean, like you said, there's so many stories that need to be told, and mm -hmm. I think animation is one of the most uh, beautiful art forms in the world. Because I mean, I fell in love with with movies, watching animated shows mm -hmm. like Avatar. Mm -hmm. I love shows like Avatar, like um, Prince of of Egypt. I mean, even. Tom and Jerry. I love Tom and Jerry. Oh, like, I love Tom up. and Jerry too. <laughs> right. It's so yeah. important in our, our, you know, process mm -hmm. of growing up that sometimes as we get older, we forget um, it's the power. Proud right? family. For yeah, sure. proud oh family. Yeah. Love proud family. <gasps> um, you see, we have so many shows, right? I mean, so, there's too so many. many. I just got Disney Plus recently and like got overwhelmed with all the nostalgia. Of all the different shows on there, I'm like, oh, what do I start with? There's so many. Oh my god! Yeah. I started with the Goofy movie. Oh, I need to do that. Oh yes. <laughs> with Powerline, which is basically Oof. Discount Prince slash Michael Jackson. Right. Same. It's like, just... <laughs> like what? That's a jam. <laughs> I love Man. that movie. Man, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's it's really important. But um. Who's your biggest inspiration as an animator? That's Ooh. one of the questions that we liked to ask so other people can look up to um, maybe young animators who want to look up to other or, you know, older animators. Yeah. Experience. yeah, so what's the one that you like to look up? That's a great question. Um, it's not anyone like super famous. Yeah. It, it's honestly, it, it's, uh, it's my mentor. She was my professor at SCAD. Her name is Jenna Zona. Mm. She is literally 
living my best life, like what I want to do <laughs> in this industry. What's she doing? So um, she's been in the industry for a while now. She's worked all around in Atlanta. She's worked at a Floyd County Productions, which creates Archer. She was an art, uh, animation director at Archer. Nice. She wow. worked at Bento Box. She worked at uh, Tiny Monster Studio doing games. And she was um, an illustrator for that Whoa. as well. So she's, she's definitely been in the industry. She now teaches full time at SCAD, but um, she's just someone that we connected instantly. And um, the way that she lived and the way she guided um, not only her students, but her teams as an animation director, like heavily inspired me. And honestly, in the last year, uh, it made me realize like what I want to do in this, in this career of mine. Like I want to be that, that woman in leadership that's strong that's encouraging and, and creates a positive working environment. That was absolutely like who she was to me. Yeah. So uh, jennazona.com is her, if you want to look her up, you folks. <laughs> yes, everybody go. <laughs> See her work. She, um, she went to SCAD for her master's. She did, absolutely she did, yeah. Wow. She got her, wow. her bachelor's in illustration and her master's in animation, yeah. Wow. So she's absolutely my inspiration. Hmm. Um, oh, SCAD grad, okay. She's killer, she's badass. Jenna, if you're here listening wow. to this, I adore you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great. Mm -hmm. I think that having a mentor in the industry is really important. So yeah. everybody, you know, get a mentor. It's worth it. It's so worth yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I so agree. What, what's your biggest advice that you can give to young creators and young animators who the biggest... want to get started or get their foot in the door? Hmm. Okay. Um... I can say two things as my biggest advice. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't be your worst critic because <laughs> us artists tend to be perfectionists mm -hmm. and to be really hard on our work. And I'll be honest, in my beginning uh, years at SCAD, I was extremely tough on myself. Nothing I made made me happy. Nothing I made I was content with. And it put a damper on my confidence. I was really, mm -hmm. and it was no, no outside forces. It was me against myself in my own head. Um, it's tough because you, I'm already in a career that's not like super popular or super like, I, I'm not getting a business degree. I'm not going into the medical field. Those are great things. You know, that's like the typical career path, I would say. Maybe that's just me. No, nope, um, that, that's it for, no. I think, all especially, children of immigrants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. especially uh, Caribbean children yeah. i think that mm -hmm. that's i mean i mean ryan i know that you have your experiences but mm -hmm. oh, for yeah. us three we're bonding in this <laughs> caribbean <laughs> ryan so yeah oh Your god it's like crying Hell. yes yes <laughs> internally screaming oh jesus yeah, so, so but we, a, under, we understand you you get it totally it's it's mm -hmm. really it's tough out here just even from that factor of like an artistic mm -hmm. career it's not always smiled upon you know, mm -hmm, it's not always mm -hmm. considered successful. So yeah. we're already being tough on ourselves because of that. And then having to compare ourselves to others and even in school settings or like looking at artists on Instagram, like, oh, that little piece looks so cool. I wish I could draw like that. I wish I was better. All this stuff, all this negativity. Like, that's just you being harsh on yourself for no reason when, you know, especially for if you're young and you're just learning, like, this is the time for you to make mistakes and a time for you to really ingest as much information yeah. about what you want to study as possible. This is the time in your life where you can make mistakes and it won't cost you your career. It won't cost you a job. Like it's yeah. okay. You know, right. how else are you going to learn and progress in your skills if you're not making mistakes and learning from them? Like that was the biggest thing that I had to overcome um, in these past four years of my bachelor's degree. Like one, just like understanding, Hey, I'm a student. I'm learning still. I, I made a mistake and now I'll never make that mistake again or I'm going to find a way, better way to do that. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be happy with what I make because that's the amount of time I had to make it. That was where my skill sets were at the time. It's great still. Maybe I could have added something after, but I'm going to be happy with it because it's going to free me from the guilt of like, oh, I should have done better. I should have done this instead of that. Like, how would you have known? You know, hindsight is everything. So mm -hmm. you kind of, right. you got to take it with a grain of salt and you got to be kind to yourself. So yeah. that would be my biggest advice is just, just understand where you're at and know that you have like the sky is the limit. You have so much time to keep growing and learning. You never stop learning in this business. There's always new programs coming out. There's always new techniques to creating these things. So um, 
you're never going to stop learning. Just keep yeah. doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Mm. Um, well, Emily, it has been a pleasure to have you on our show. You have been an amazing guest. But before <laughs> we let you go, we have our most important question oh. in this show. And Ryan, I'm going to let Ryan ask this question. No, I, I, Ryan, just... ask me. <laughs> Right. Yes, we've asked, asked this, asked this question. question like 20 times <laughs> already. You can do this. Come right. on. So, what is your favorite movie or show? <laughs> and Look the show, Ryan. Ryan. Get hey. it, Ryan. Applause for Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> hey. Good job, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I can't answer this. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so tough. It's okay. I just Top told you, three, at least. Top uh, three. Top three? Oh, my God. <laughs> I told you at the pressure. beginning, like, I'm not even biased. Like, I, I love everything. But if I had to pick. <laughs> yes. Pick. Um, okay. It's something that's recent. Mind you, I love everything. But this is it's something okay. that I really am passionate about. Um, there's this show on Adult Swim. It was also previously on TBS. It's called Final Space. Um, Final Space. It's an adult yes, animated it's... show. Have you guys heard of it? I think it's, it has, like, a green alien, uh, like, uh, like, a blob. <laughs> yeah, Is it yeah, that yeah. one? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that show, uh, it was created by Olin Rogers, and he's this guy who's done YouTube for a really long time, but he has this create, really creative mind and specific way of telling stories, um, and he finally was able <laughs> to pitch this show and get it made after so many years of being on YouTube. Wow. Um, so it's his very first show, and I think they're working on season three now. The reason why it's one of my favorites is just because um, – it's adult animation, but it's not your typical adult animated show that's, like, really raunchy or yeah. bad animation. Like, this is truly, like, cinematic quality. And it's 2D, and it's, like, really, it's, like, pushing, um, again, like, I'm always about, like, pushing the narrative and the, the medium forward. Yeah. Um, it's just very different from adult animation out there, and I really latched onto it and onto the story and the characters. Yeah. Um, so I would highly suggest anyone who likes adult animation or just a good story in general to check out Final yeah. Space. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. <laughs> nice. Mm. Is that, that's your show, right? Well, my the show? show? Your favorite show, uh, right? Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> or one okay. of your favorite shows. For show, sure. Yeah. It's and one of my what's favorites. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Hi. <laughs> Stop. I can't I know, pick I one. Um, I'm always going to like gravitate towards animation because duh. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, All right. Man. I'd have to honestly, I know I've mentioned it earlier, but Spider-Verse is definitely one of oh, my favorites. Yes. Great choice. Like Great I can't choice. not like, Great every choice. time I watch it, I catch something new or yeah. I get emotional over the story again. Again, I'm a, such a sucker for a good narrative and um, like, uh, oh my God, good character development too. <laughs> this, I mean, and that, that film has everything in it. And it the does. style is gorgeous. It's Spider-Man. You can't not love Spider-Man. Mm, exactly. I, I agree with that. I completely agree with that. <laughs> and it. that's, it's that's tough it. because I love so many. So no, that's just one of many answers I could have given. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Emily, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being in the show. And uh, we can't, Wait to hear what happens to you in the future. And we know it's going to happen a lot of good things for you. So Absolutely. we're excited. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> thank you. You're the best. You. See you later. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> so we had Emily as our guest. She was amazing. Right, guys? Oh, yeah. We learned a, a lot. wealth of knowledge. Yeah, she was. I mean, learning about the, the animating animation industry was really important and also i know that a lot of filmmakers want to work on animated films so that's mm. cool also i know that everybody saw me telling my dad to, to, to go. So for those of you who are listening to this and not watching yeah. during the interview eric's dad came into the room and, <laughs> and rick kept trying to stop him and he i had, wanted he, to laugh so bad so he had my guitar. Yeah, he had my gu Yeah, we tried. He was he he had my guitar and he just decided to you know, carry being parents, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, like what, what what privacy? What what door? What this what is, is you can my house. you can live uh, I mean I, I when they lived here and I lived back in Puerto Rico, I did not have any privacy and they did not live with me. Imagine that. So <laughs> it was like no privacy? What's that concept? I don't know. Anyways, um Having Emily in the show was a lot of fun, and I know that she's going to uh, go forward and create a lot of good projects. So, um, yeah, Mahalia. You have anything else to yes. say? Yes. 
Um, don't forget to give, uh, don't forget to give, my God, my English. Don't forget to give Emily a like um, on her Instagram. Go ahead and yes, follow her. Follow. Um, also, check out our merch store. Go to www.struggleisrealpodcast.com. There you can find um, our merch store. You can subscribe to the podcast. You can see different episodes um, and sign up for a newsletter as well. And don't forget that you can also become a monthly subscriber. Yeah. Um, you can donate anything from $1, $5, or $20. A million um, dollars. Every month. And the more you support this, the more you support this channel, the more we can grow. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. That's well, about it, guys. Uh, okay. Ryan, any last closing words? Hey, everybody, keep creating, baby. You're going to change it up <laughs> soon? <All> right, guys. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> keep creating. We're going to put that creating. on a t-shirt. Why have we right, not put keep that creating. on a t-shirt oh, yet? Oh, that's actually... Keep creating, people. Woo. Okay. Okay. Well, let's... wow. Eric, <laughs> what a good... Eric is so judgmental. He wow. Never you guys support, need to bro? understand that I possess a Caribbean face. So as do I. It's not your face. It's it's what you say. Okay. <laughs> you crazy. That's that translation. That's oh, what this is, is my last episode. I'm resigning. Wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. cool. So next episode we'll have a new co-host. Bye. Let's see who it is. It's not gonna be me. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. Bye.